Good day everyone, this is Wazat, the series where we take a look at various tycoon and construction style games, and today we're taking a look at Automation by Camshaft Software, a small Australian based team. This is the beta version of the game which was updated just earlier this week, so please note that nothing here is final, there may be some bugs, and not everything that is planned to be in the game is included yet. Uh, but as you can see here, the final game will have three major sections, including the engine designer, the car designer, and the business tycoon aspect in which you will sell the cars in which you have just designed. And uh, as your company grows over the years, you will need to redesign your cars to meet the demands of the market. And I'm hoping that means that not only do you have to update your engine horsepower or efficiency, but also that the styling of the car will have to change over the years. So say in the 80s, you might have to design a car that looks kind of like a DeLorean and actually get it to sell. Uh, the Tycoon side of the game is still in development, but here we can preview the designer tools, so let's get to it and take a look. First I'm going to hop into the options here and take a look. Everything here seems to be in metric, which as a Canadian I approve of. Um, I am going to switch to horsepower because I am more familiar with that. I have some sound settings. Everything else looks okay. Um, let's jump into the sandbox and see what we can break here. Note that. I am familiar with cars, but I'm definitely no petrol head, um, so excuse me if I fumble through some of these complex options here. There are uh, various tutorials through this game, a too small of an which will limit in power. themselves are the worth has to work the, um, the watch. The I'm not going to take a look at all of them because I could actually spend quite a bit of time, so I'm just going to sort of go at it with the knowledge I have. Um, let's have let's build a basic engine here, something really simple. We'll go with an um, inline engine, which is actually maybe I can show you. One six, okay. Uh, we'll do an inline six-cylinder engine. Uh, we'll build it just out of cheap old cast iron. A lot of notes on the side that I can't be bothered to read right now, but it'll tell you the different benefits of using the different uh, pieces. We have aluminum. We have, what is this, alloy of aluminum and silicon, that's pretty fancy, and even magnesium, which apparently requires a magnesium workshop. From what I understand, magnesium is a particularly difficult metal to work with, so let's go with cast iron. It also looks like it takes a lot more time to work on the um, higher class engine blocks. We um, can change our bore, which increases the size of our engine as well as the actual size of the uh, shafts, the camshafts, and the stroke, which I believe adjusts the, well it'll be, not the length of camshaft necessarily, but how long the um, piston will need to go up and down. I'm going to sort of leave it in the middle here. Uh, I've got a capacity in CC here, so let's do like a, let's bring this down to 2000 CC, which should be, that's like a 2 liter engine right there. That's good for like a commercial car, right? I have no idea. <laughs> um, so cranks will also ooh, make those cast iron, which apparently have average torque. Uh, cast iron is made by pouring molten iron into a mold. Once hardened, is machined to produce the running surfaces and the crank and the conrod bearings, etc., etc. What I love about these sim type games is you don't have to be an expert in the field, if they're done right, which it looks like this one is with all the tutorials and extra information, you can actually learn quite a bit about what you're building here as you go. And that's the type of learning I like to do, just sort of go at it and see what happens. Okay, so we'll also have some uh, cast iron con rods. I didn't know that's what those were called. Uh, these are what the pistons attached to. Um, so there are options here. So these have max average RPM, low torque. And these have low RPM with high torque. So there's various ways we can send our power down the drivetrain. Um, let's go with high torque, low RPM. Uh, I wonder what the benefit is between these. Simply standard Conrad has been designed to be a lot thicker and stronger, increases the ability to withstand torque, but makes it heavier. This would be a good choice for building a force-induced engine on a low budget. Sure, that's what we're doing. And the pistons themselves, cast iron, heavy cast. Uh, it's also ooh, forged requires a forge works, which I do not have. And hy hyper cast. 
Hypo okay, I'm not gonna even bother trying to say that word. Uh, it means the piston expands a lot less when heated, etc., etc. Okay, that sounds too fancy for me. Let's go for uh, low RPM. I let's go for another high torque option, so the heavy cast piston. And this should be basically our insides of our engine here. Let's go to the top end and look at our heads and valves. Got a basic push rod type. So these are, I don't know what that's connected to down here, but just on uh, springs and little um, levers. Direct acting. Okay, basically attached right to the engine. Oh, it's, oh I see, it's got a little cam on it. Basically connected right to the flywheel, I think, right? No, the flywheel's, whoa. No, this is, this is the transmission belts. Really starting to show my, uh, my lack of knowledge. I'm, actually, I'm sure after playing a few hours of this game, though, I would know what every little part is. Um, overhead cam. Okay, so we got two. Okay, wait, I'm gonna compare these. So these are like all in line. Well, these are two on the sides. I don't know what benefit that would give you. What's the difference here? This is very high RPM, low friction, low airflow. And these are only high RPM with average friction, average airflow, or low, sorry, low airflow. And last, we have dual overhead cam, which, uh, oh, I see, and then there's two cam rods, which lowers the friction. That sounds nice. Uh, let's go with just overhead cam, because I do want something that's nice, but not too expensive. And we can actually choose the number of valves. Three valves, that seems weird. Under. Is that like one intake and two exhaust, or the other way around? Let's just go with two. It's less parts to fix when this thing breaks. Compression. Um, oh, it's doing something here. Let's take a look. I think I can... Oh, I can't zoom into these parts. Oh, there we go. That actually adjusts the face of my um, piston. High compression, more power, slightly better economy. Lower compression, lower RON. I think this has to do with um, gases. Let me think here. Uh, compression can reduce knock. There, there was a really good tutorial on it that I don't remember. Compression describes the ratio at which the fuel air mixture is compressed from the volume at the bottom. But of the from what I gather, is the um, higher the compression ratio, the less likely you're going to get knockback, but you're going to want to use higher um, octane fuels, which also means more pollution. So more efficient engine for uh, destroying the world and uh, maybe potentially more damage to your engine in the long term. So it's going to be economy car. Let's actually keep the compression fairly low. Um, cam profile. This one. Oh, hello. In this video, we are going to cover both what a cam is as well as cam profile. Cams are made of an egg-shaped disc placed mm, on the shaft. As the cam rotates, the peak of the egg shape will press down on the top of a valve, forcing the valve to open. So as I'm going to assume this has to do with our timing. Um, better cam profile, better high-end performance, slightly so lower RON, lower cam profile. Uh, okay, so not so much our timing, but actually like how far open these pistons will be? Not pistons, but um, fuel valves. Uh, let's just keep it normal, because I think that's less likely to break something. Race, sport, normal, low. Should spray it to the bottom of normal. VVT is the variable valves collection of technologies to help work optimize the valve train action throughout the all of the engine operation conditions. Uh, we're gonna go with none. Oh, okay, this, this is the actual timing. We'll cover valve timings, variable valve timing, VVT, and variable valve lift. Variable VBL. valve timing. That variable sounds too complex for me. Let's let's leave that off. Still got VVL. Um, we'll leave that at none. We'll make we'll make a fancier car later, but right now, I kind of try to stay within my comfort zone here. Uh, valve profile. That's off. Aesthetics. What is this? Oh, I can actually change the um, yeah, the, this part. 
like basically where the coolant goes, or is that the oil? And we can also change the color of it. Let's go with red. That's always a nice, strong, solid car color, right? Okay. Aspiration. I assume that means this is part of our air intake. Naturally aspirated. Exhaust manifolds or headers. Direct the exhaust gases from each of the exhaust ports okay, we're actually doing through exhaust the muffler's and tailpipe. The quality of the exhaust oh, manifold exhaust can make a dramatic difference in the amount of power the engine... Okay, let's move past that. Um, so this is basically, I think, air flows over the engine willy-nilly. And this is turbocharged. Pushing as much air as you can into the engine. Um, let's leave that at naturally aspirated. It can uh, take in any air that it needs naturally. Uh, setup natural, natural. Intracooler. Um, what other presets do we have here? Economy, performance, custom. Okay, let's just go with economy. Oh, apparently this don't work yet. Compressor, turbine, AR ratio. This is. How constricting the lead up to the turbine is compressed. Wow, this goes into so much detail. I don't think we can go through it all in this video, but I really want to like learn what all these different little bits are. Okay, fuel system. Uh, carburetor. A carburetor is a fuel system that uses throttles to adjust the amount of fuel that is provided. Something that I always hear about these complex sim games is that there's never enough documentation. People have no idea what they're doing. This does not seem to be a problem in this game. You're just overloaded with information. I could probably sit down and just watch all those tutorials one by one. It's like playing um, how it's made. Um, so where are we here? We can have the carburetor or we can actually inject... Whoa. Inject fuel. Uh, I think injection sounds way more expensive. Let's just do air carburetor. Uh, ooh, taro barrel shotgun. Four barrel. And... Doke. Do DCOE style carburetors have the main advantage of having a direct airflow path into the engine, whereas the drafts have to turn the air... Oh, okay. So, basically it's straighter for the air, while this the air has to come in and turn corners and... It becomes all turbulent and stuff. Um, oh, I see, and this will probably lower the amount of turns it needs to do. So let's do let's do twin carburation, sure. We'll, we'll spend the extra man hours and extra cost into making your engine that much more fancy. Um, and intake. An air intake is the point from which the engine is supplied with air. This air is usually drawn through a filter first. Okay. Oh, I see. That looks kind of funny. Standard little two intakes. Uh, performance. Oh, I see high airflow. Air can come in from all directions. And race, which is basically just a tube with no filter. That is not good for out on the roads. Let's just go with performance because I think having two standards looks a little silly. Um, our car is getting, our engine is getting slightly more fancier as we go through the steps here. Fuel type. Uh, regular. Regular. No. Leaded? What is this? What year is this? Uh, we'll do regular unleaded. We'll save the environment. Uh, premium super ulti ultimate unleaded? I didn't even know that existed. Okay, let's just do regular unleaded with a green fuel mixture. Yeah, another tutorial. Fuel mixture adjusts the average air fuel ratio the engine is using. A ratio of 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel is known as the stoichiometric mixture. Stoichiometric mixture, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the ideal ratio at which there is the exact amount of air to fully combust all of the fuel. A mixture with more fuel than stoic is known as rich. Okay, so where is like my optimal... Uh, more power, lower RON for a high, and then a lower fuel is much better. Okay, let's just keep it... let's keep it lean. Uh, ignition timing. I'm not even going to touch that. RPM limit. Um, yeah, I don't think we want this engine going at 12,000 RPM. This thing would probably fly to pieces. Uh, let's actually bring this down. The, rev the RPM limiter restricts the maximum RPM the engine can reach either by a fuel cut or a spark cut. A lower RPM limit will lessen wear. Yeah. 
I don't know what an optimal RPM for an engine is, but let's keep this around 5,000. That sounds, that actually sounds high. Let's say, uh, 3,500. Yeah, 3,500. That's my managerial decision. And lastly, we have the exhaust. A cast log short cast. Okay, so that's just a tube coming out the side. This one's got some bigger tubes. And this one's actually called tubular. Ooh, look at that. Look at all those tubes. Gotta love tubes. I wonder why that one crosses over this one. I'm missing some sort of fancy design. We've got long tubular. It's getting all chrome and fancy. And then race tubular. Whoa, that is pretty fancy. I'm gonna go tubular. Just because it looks really cool. And it's one of the cheaper tubes. Uh, exhaust single is our only option. Muffler bypass. We can bypass the muffler. You know, let's let's keep this car quiet. Muffler stays on. Exhaust diameter. Um, 1.75 inches. It's interesting that everything was metric, but now this is inches. Let's just do two inches. It's starting to look like some sort of a uh, truck, truck motor or something. Very small one. Like a, not a truck, but like a. What am I thinking? Tractor. Catalytic converter? Uh, yeah, two-way. Catalytic converters are used to convert harmful emissions into less harmful emissions. Cats can restrict power somewhat Cats. by limiting no. airflow, and can only be run on certain engines. Cats generally do not like neither big, sporty, aggressive cams, leaded fuel... Yeah, basically they don't want a lot of air going through them too fast. That's full of lead. Um... We'll have a high flow, we'll just have a, a two-way catalytic converter, make it easier to pass our um, our tests. What is this going to? I guess this is going to go off to some testing device so we can like actually see what kind of... Or maybe that's actually our exhaust pipe going to the end of the car. I'm not sure yet. Um, muffler, baffled. Muffler. I know what a muffler does. Second muffler, we can have two mufflers. I think one is enough, we don't want to restrict our airflow too much. Okay, so that actually is, like, the other end of the car there. And I think that's the last bit. Let's go to testing. The testing lab is where you finally get to test your engine. Yay. You have two options here. The first is full testing. Oh, to do this, it's confusing me. The words don't match up to what they're saying. In the top left here is the dyno graph, showing how the engine produces power and torque. You get presented with all the stats of the engine here, as well as the stats of the previous test if we change a setting on the engine and test it again. Stats that improve change to green. Stats oh, this is cool. So we can stats tweak as we test. Uh, test mode. Whoa. What is this? Oh, I see. We got like uh, charts and we got oil gauges. What are these called? Pressure gauges? We've got gauges. Let's do... I don't know, let's just hit the big green start button, which is actually blue. So this thing is producing not a lot of horsepower, and it's reaching the RPM limit that we asked for. Oh, I see, it's being limited. So that's that's good, I guess, if it's actually reaching the R limit. That's why it was sort of making weird noises at the end there. I think it was cutting the sparks. Um, and we've got a pretty steady curve of RPM. That's not RPM, but um, horsepower. 66 horsepower? That feels low, but maybe that's just because I'm used to watching shows about like power cars where they talk about like, you know, 300 horsepower! I have no idea how much horsepower an um, economy car should actually have since I've never actually owned a car. But I know a bit about them, so take what you will of that. Um, what can we tweak to increase our horsepower? Can we... let's go right back to the bottom end. And... don't think this will change much. Top end... Um, let's add... Let's give it some better compression. So that was kind of low, and then we'll even change our cam profile a bit. And then we're gonna hit test again. We were at, what, 33 horsepower? That's our top end. Oh, whoa, that's making crazy noises. 
I think we broke something because it only reached seven horsepower. Okay, um, <laughs> let's go fix that. Ooh, compression back down, and profile back down. And let's give that another test. How do you save? Oh, okay, this is revision one. Okay, so we can compare it to. There we go. That's running smoother. Oh yeah. 60 horsepower with just some small tweaks. Okay, let's leave it there. I think that's pretty good. I should kind of proud of myself. Um, so how do we get out of here? This is... Should be a way to save this? I'm not sure what these buttons do. Um, just check the other test mode. Uh, ooh. I have no idea what this is. Slidey red thing. And... Oh, I want to keep that open. All right, let's just hit start. Oil pressure is in the green. Torque is up. Power's down. Oh, I see. This is... Rum, brum, brum. That's awesome. That is so cool. Okay. I'm going to close this, and hopefully this actually saves what I've done. Um... It seems to have not. And I just made a new engine. I'm gonna remake that engine, and I'll be back with you in a second. Alright, you guys should be glad that I have a near picture-perfect memory. Everything's exactly the same. So, let's test this one again and see how close we get to the original 60 horsepower. And I don't remember the RPM, I think it's hitting our limiter at about 3500. Which we're not reaching, and wow! 95 horsepower. I don't know what changed here. Apparently our material cost is in the red. I don't know if we're over budget. We've got good power, good torque. Red line is not being reached, I guess. I don't know why it's yellow. I guess that's okay. Response from the okay. It's, it's very quiet. It's not smooth. It weighs too much. It's too big. Uh, it costs way too much to service. I think the big difference here is my bore size is a lot larger. Maybe we'll fiddle with that a bit. Uh, really bad emissions, which I was trying to avoid. Uh, economy is good, which is what I was trying to aim for. And fuel octane, I don't really know. I guess it's a high octane engine. Let's go to the bottom end and actually, yeah, uh, let's shrink this engine a bit. Well, that's what I did wrong. Uh, this is supposed to be a two liter engine. So let's bring that down to an actual two liter engine, unlike a lot of cars, which are like, 1800 cc and they call it a two liter um go back to testing let's try this engine now it's like a third smaller we got at least 60 like last time come on 45 62 nice and 200 2500 rpm and a lot more green economy is still bad and our power and torque is down but we weren't really aiming for that uh, emissions are down. How come the economy is so bad, though? I'm kind of confused about that. Hmm. Well, I think this was a good test of the engine system here. Now let's actually save this one. The save button apparently is right here. I think it needs to be a little bit bigger in next revisions. And um, in the next episode, we'll see if we can get this engine inside of a car that we'll design. Um, if you guys are interested in this game, go check out the website. Um, I'll link it in the description below. The engine demo is out right now if you want to play around with it. Um, I think you can even make an engine similar to the one I made here. Just some of the higher end ones are locked out in the demo. And the car designer demo, which I'll be previewing in the next episode, is going to be out on August 6th, so you can take a look at that. And if you guys think this is an interesting game and want me to mess around with it a bit more, maybe make a, a higher powered engine and see how much horsepower we can get, uh, let me know and we'll take a look. For now, I'll see you guys later and take care.